Hello, Hannah here from Daisy Farm Crafts with a video to go along with my crochet ridge lines gingham blanket. Um, if you've been following us for a while, you know that my mom loves to make gingham blankets. Um, but I realized a couple months ago that I have actually never made one. Um, so I thought I'd give it a shot, especially since I found these really pretty shades in um, Bernat Bundle Up. And um, I just loved how they worked up together. And my husband's brother and his wife are having a baby girl in a couple of months. So I also wanted to make a gift for her. Um, the colors that I used are called Red Wagon, Posy, and Cloud White. And I needed three skeins of the medium shade, the Posy color and then just one skein each of the red wagon and the white. And that was for a finished blanket size of about 30 by 35 inches. And for this blanket, I used both a size H 5 millimeter hook and a size I 5.5 millimeter hook. Um, if you end up using a different type of yarn, um, you know, an acrylic that's a little bit tighter, I would definitely recommend just working up a practice swatch before you start to just figure out which hook sizes work the best. Um, but again, I used a size H and a size I. And as usual, if you'd like the full written pattern that goes along with this video, you can find that on daisyfarmcrafts.com. So I am going to start with my size H hook. And I'm going to start with the darker color, the red wagon. And for this blanket, uh, you just need a base chain that is the number six multiplied by an odd number and then plus two for the turning chain. So I am going to do six times three, which is 18, and then add two for a base chain of 20. And after the base chain, I'm going to switch to the bigger hook, the size I. And I'm going to start in the third chain from the hook and work a half double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into that third chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three loops. And I'm going to work one half double crochet into each of the first six chains. So that's five. And then I'm going to pause on the sixth stitch when I still have three loops on my hook. And I'm going to pull through with the new color. And I'm going to start with pulling through with the, the lighter pink color. And in order to get the, the gingham look, this lighter pink color is going to be carried through on every row. All right, so I'm gonna give that a little pull and I'm gonna leave that light pink tail to weave in later, but I'm gonna um, lay the dark pink across the top of my chain and I'm gonna crochet over it as I work the next six stitches with the light pink. Still working half double crochet. And then on the sixth stitch, I'm going to pause again. And um, this time I'm going to bring that light pink yarn to the front of my work 
just to, to prevent the yarn from twisting. I'm going to try to always keep the low or the lighter color to the front and the darker color to the back each time I switch. So, and then now I'm going to finish off with six half double crochets with a darker pink color. And so if you were working a bigger blanket, you would just keep that pattern all the way across, um, alternating every six stitches and always crocheting over whichever color you're not using. So after I work into that last chain, I'm going to um, keep working with the dark pink and um, I'm going to finish that stitch and then I'm going to chain two and turn. And then I'm going to wrap that light pink yarn around the side of my work and I'm going to keep crocheting over it. And from now on, I'm always going to be working up through the front two loops of each stitch. Normally we'd work into the tops of the stitch, but I'm going to work up through those front two loops. So again, I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to go right into that first stitch up through the front two loops, and I'm going to make sure that that light yarn is in front of my hook, so I'm crocheting over it, and then work my half double crochet. So just doing the same thing, switching every six stitches, but now I'm working front two loop half double crochet. And you can see it kind of makes those ridged lines going across, which is why I wanted to work in the front two loops, just for some extra texture. And here's where you can see where I'm going to switch to the light pink yarn. I'm going to keep that dark pink to the back and then pull through with the light pink. And then kind of give that a little tug and lay it across the top of my work and keep crocheting over it. And so then the next time when I switch back, I'm going to pull that light pink color to the front. And that just kind of helps from uh, to prevent the yarn from getting super tangled as you go along. So I'm just going to keep switching every six stitches and I'm going to um, do this, these sets of color for five rows until I get a, a square and then I'm going to switch things up and bring in the white color. And once you get to the end of the row, it can be a little tricky to find those front two loops. Um, so you may need to just use your fingers to dig a little bit. But you're just going to do the same thing and chain two and turn. Alright, so I've done my five rows to make these color block squares. So at the end of the fifth row, I'm going to pause on that dark color and um, I'm going to cut it and weave a tail that I can weave into the blanket later. And again, I'm never going to cut that, that medium color, you know, unless I'm joining a new skein. The medium color is going to be carried through on every row. So I am going to pull through with the medium color because now I'm going to start kind of working in opposite colors to make that gingham look. So I don't have any yarn to crochet over right now so I'm just going to do six front two loop half double crochets. And then pause on the sixth, and now I'm going to bring in the white. 
just the same as I did before. And now that white is my lighter color, I'm going to keep that same trend of keeping my the darker color to the back and the lighter color to the front. So I'm going to treat white as my lighter color and always bring that one to the front every time I'm switching colors just to keep things from getting twisted. And so now I'll work six across in white. And then I will switch back to the light pink. And that is all you really need to know to make this blanket. You're just going to keep switching colors every six stitches and then um, switch up the color blocks after every five rows. And then um, you just want to make sure you end your blanket with the, the dark color on the outside so that it matches the beginning of the blanket. So before you get started on the border, you'll want to weave in all of your ends with a tapestry needle. Um, I already wove in most of mine, but I wanted to show you real quick. Um, all you need to do is just kind of hide that yarn in the stitches and kind of weave your tapestry needle up and down in some different directions until you feel like it's um, nice and secure. And then when you feel like that end is pretty woven in there, you can just use some scissors and cut it right next to the blanket. And then that end disappears. All right, so for the border, I decided to switch back to the H five millimeter hook, the smaller hook. Um, I just found that when I was working the border, it was fanning out a little bit and switching to a smaller hook um, helped keep it straighter. So again, I would just maybe do a practice swatch or you know, start on the border and just kind of experiment with which hook works the best for you. So I'm just gonna pull up a loop, chain one, and then single crochet into that corner. And then I am gonna just kind of work into these outer spaces that are on the sides of my blanket. You know, our half double crochet kind of makes those ridges. I'm gonna work into the outer part of the ridge. And I'm gonna work two single crochets into each of those spaces. And when you get to the light pink squares that kind of have the, the white poking out on the sides, if you want to kind of cover that up a little bit, you can also insert your hook um, underneath that, that white yarn. So I kind of just pull it up a little bit and then insert my hook into that same space and kind of pull the white along with me. Um, if it doesn't bother you, then just, you know, don't worry about it. Just little bits of white that you can kind of cover up a little bit more if you want. Just give that a tiny tug and then insert your hook into that, that outer ridge and kind of pull that white yarn with it. And then I didn't really worry about the, the pink yarn showing through with on the dark pink squares, but and just kind of check your work as you go, make sure it looks okay on the back side. And I'm still just going to work two single crochets into those outer spaces. And I want to work three single crochet into each corner, so I'm going to kind of count those two ending single crochet as part of my corner.
And then I'm just gonna work one single crochet per stitch on the ends. And this is where my base chain is, so I'm gonna kind of work in between the stitches um, instead of right on the edge of that base chain, just so it keeps things a little tighter and my base chain doesn't pull away from the edge of my blanket. And I'm just going to work one single cr crochet in each of those spaces all the way across. And again, I'm going to work three single crochets into the corner. And then I'm going to do the same thing working back up the side, um, just working two single crochet in every other space, kind of on those outer ridge spaces. So work two. And then two. And then again, if you want to um, kind of do an extra little cover up of the that white yarn that peeks through on the back side, um, you can kind of just insert your hook underneath it. It's a little bit trickier on this side, but you can kind of turn your work towards you and um, get that white yarn underneath your hook so you can cover it up a little bit better. And when you get up to this corner, again, three single crochets in the corner, and then just work one single crochet per stitch all the way across. Okay, so back at the starting corner, I slip stitched into the starting stitch, and now I'm going to chain five. And I'm going to keep working in the same direction and I'm just going to single crochet back down the chain. So I'm going to have four single crochets. And um, you can make that chain as long as you want. You just want to always remember how many you started with because you're going to count those each time. So I'm always going to have four single crochets. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. So the next two stitches that haven't been worked into. And I'm going to turn my work. And now I'm going to work into the back loops only. And again, I want to have four single crochets. So I skipped over the first two um, slip stitches and I just want to work into the back loops of the four single crochets. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work back the way it was before, and now work in the back loops again, going back down toward my work. And sometimes you have to dig a little bit to get that fourth stitch, so that's why you always want to count and make sure that you have four. And then slip stitch into the next two unworked stitches. And then flip your work and work right back up that chain, working into the back loops. So you're just going to do this all the way across, going up and down, always working those four single crochets. And then I will show you um, how I did the corners. All right, so once you work the corner, you're just, or sorry, reach the corner, you're gonna wanna do the same thing, but I'm just gonna work one slip stitch right back into that corner space. And then I'm going to turn, and now I'll only have one slip stitch to skip over this time, but I still want to have my four back loop single crochets. So I'm going to work up the side of the border, 
chain one and turn and then work back down with my four And then I'm just going to work one slip stitch right back into that same corner space, that same corner stitch. And then do the exact same thing, just skip over that one slip stitch and then do four single crochets up and down. And um, you, you can kind of do this um, slip stitch in the corner, you know, kind of anchors those up and down single crochets and you can do it as many times as you need until you feel like the corner is fanned around enough. Um, for this blanket, I did it for a total of three times. So I am just going to slip stitch into that corner one more time, just so I can make sure that that corner fans all the way around without pulling too much. So I'll just do it one more time up and down and then I will just um, slip stitch into the next two stitches and then keep going as I, as I did before on the side. All right, and now I'll skip over those two slip stitches again and just keep going all the way across the side the same as I did before and then work the, the corners the same as I just did, either slip stitching two or three times into that corner, making sure that it looks good. And then I'll show you um, how to finish it off when you get to the starting corner. So I just finished slip stitching three times and working up and down into that last corner. So I'm going to end when I'm at the, the top of the border and um, tie off. And then I like to just use a tapestry needle and that, that end to just sew the two sides together. So I'm going to kind of just start at the top. And I'm going to do my best to um, insert my needle kind of on those um, outer loops so that I can just kind of keep things looking um, like the rest of the border and just kind of keep those lines. So just kind of weave back and forth. And then I am just going to um, weave in this end the same as I did the other ends until it's hidden. And then I um, will cut it and be finished. So as you can see, since I carried yarn through, you know, my tension wasn't totally perfect. So I would definitely recommend blocking this blanket after you're finished. Um, here's a picture of what my blanket looked like when it was blocked. I like to just get it wet and then really stretch it out and pin the corners and then leave it to dry. Um, and that definitely helps to just kind of even out all of your stitches and all the yarn that was being carried through. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy making this blanket. Um, when you're finished, please come share a picture with us on Instagram or Facebook. Um, with hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts, my mom and I would love to see. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy crocheting!